Okay, so let's say you have a VP9, and maybe, like me, you've had your VP9 for a couple of years, but you always secretly wondered, or maybe not so secretly, that the VP9 had a little bit longer slide. After all, most very popular 9mm handguns do have a longer slide variety available, and the VP9 has kind of lagged on that until now <laughs> until this very moment when now you can stretch your VP9 into a long slide and it is called the VP9L and here's the really cool part you don't have to buy the whole gun in fact to my knowledge you can't buy the whole gun you buy just the slide assembly and it comes like this it comes in a box and let me just hover right here for a minute in case you guys want to jot down those part numbers. You shouldn't have to. You can just go to HK's website and order it directly. That's what I did to ship it right to your house because it is not in the United States a firearm and it just comes in a foam foam padded box and it is a full assembly. There you go. Barrel recoil spring and guide rod everything right there so changing your VP9 over to the VP9 long slide or L is simply a matter of taking off one slide and putting on the other let's do that voila there we have the VP9 long slide VP9L-B, I do not know what the dash B is all about. I know there is a VP9-B that has a American style button magazine release instead of the European style paddle release, so I don't know why that designation is on this slide. Put them side by side and you can see the extra length that you get with the long slide. So you're going to go out about another inch it looks to me like the recoil spring is exactly the same because like uh, some other guns like the Walther PPQ log slide the recoil spring and guide rod actually stop right about here and so they're the same length barrel is of course longer so there's going to be some benefit to the longer barrel let's take a look at that another benefit to the barrel is that it has that o-ring the O-ring is something that HK has done on their pistols for quite a while. Uh, I know my HK45 has the O-ring, as does uh, USP models as well. They say the O-ring makes it more accurate, basically. It just keeps the, uh, during the barrel unlock um, motion, it keeps it more centered, more straight, as that bullet is departing the end of the barrel. So... Uh, it probably is more advantageous on the longer barrels because there's a better chance that the bullet may still be just leaving the barrel as it unlocks. So that is one key difference. You have the O-ring on the barrel. Everything else about it is really the same. It is a polygonal rifled barrel. We do have some lightning cuts in the slide to make it a little bit lighter so that the extra length doesn't add significantly more weight and maybe I'll put the two of them on a scale we'll find out exactly how much more weight if any is added they have also put a fiber optic front sight in red there are no other parts uh, provided so there's no spares blacked out rear sight which is fully adjustable for windage and elevation so that's a nice touch they have left the polymer cocking ears 
or handles or whatever you want to call them. I, I like them. So it was nice that they left those in there. So it's basically just a longer version of the slide. And if it looks fairly familiar to you, it probably should because it looks an awful lot like Walter's long PPQ slide. So there it is. So the big questions are, does it make the gun more accurate? Does it make the gun more balanced? Does it reduce recoil or muzzle flip? So those are really the questions. Those are the reasons why you might want to consider a long slide, especially if you want to shoot this gun in matches such as USPSA or IDPA. That might be of interest to you if you're an HK person. I know there are a lot of folks that like to shoot their VP9s. So this could be something to consider. All right, negatives. I'll start right out with, a, there's a couple of, to me, pretty glaringly obvious negatives. First one is the cost. This was not cheap. I paid somewhere in the neighborhood of 450 ish um, Again, direct from HK. Um, somewhere in the neighborhood of $450, maybe a little bit more than that, for this slide. I will say they, they turned it around quick. I, I received it less than a week after I ordered it, and I was expecting it to be a couple weeks before they even shipped it. Um, but I received it in less than a week, so that was good. But uh, it's a little bit on the pricey side, but considering you do get the barrel, you do get the recoil spring and guide rod assembly, you know, and, and this certainly very nice slide, I guess you can justify all that cost. It's really maybe not so bad, right? But it just seems like a big number. Uh, but it's probably not as bad as if you pieced all that together in the aftermarket. But the other downside, and this one, there, there really isn't any but, and that is, there's no cut. We have no cut in the slide here for an optic. No RMR mounting option. And you would think that one of the big benefits to buying this slide assembly for this gun, and if they really wanted to sell a lot of them, that would certainly drive the sales, would be to add a cutout for your RMR. But no. <laughs> No, they didn't. They, they gave us nicely upgraded sights, but uh, you still can't mount an optic. So I think that's, I think they walked away and left a whole lot of money on the table by not doing that. So that's a downside for sure, but I'm not going to harp on it. It is what it is. I am going to evaluate this slide just the way you see it. And I kind of can't wait to put some rounds through it. Somebody did already ask me, it was either on the uh, Just an Opinion Patreon page or it was the Just an Opinion uh, Facebook page, but someone did already ask, hey, can you put the VP9SK slide, or vice versa, can you put the long slide on the VP9SK frame? <laughs> I said, well, thought to myself, probably not, but I, you can bet I'm going to check. So. Here is the SK, and just for a quick top-down comparison, you can see that the, uh, the long slide is significantly longer than the SK. But the big thing to note, too, is the, the difference in the frame. You can just see laying them there. I have not actually taken the slides off and tried it, but I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be doable. So I think we're going to have... We're going to have a big gap right in this area over here, but just for fun, let's try it. And you can see if I just if I just hold it up here to where it would sit, you're going to have you're going to have a whole lot of gap right there. And so even if you could make it work, it's going to look stupid, and you're going to allow a whole lot of garbage to get up in there and mess with your action so um, I mean not your action action but get up into the recoil spring and and all that so the answer is no you couldn't you can't really put this slide on this frame I like the sights I like the extra length these lightning cuts also serve as a nice forward cocking serration to be able to manipulate the slide The extra length on the barrel should be nice, and we'll try and find out if it makes any difference when we're shooting.
Okay, let's check the weight. Wait. 9.15 for the regular slide. And 9.15 for the long slide. So, the engineers at HK definitely took out just exactly the right amount of material to make it the same. So, exact same weight on the slides. VP9L-B, whatever the dash B stands for. VP9 long slide, shooting Sig Sauer, 124 grain ball, elite performance ammo. Very first shots, let's break it in on some steel. Tactical AR-500, steel target. Well, that's kind of all over the place. <laughs> that was 15 without really trying. Let me try the, uh, the flapper up top. Take my time a little bit. I do like this sight picture a whole lot. Blackout rear. The fiber optic in the front is good visibility. Haven't figured out where the hold is. I think Looking to me like it likes a six o'clock hold. Yeah, I think for sure. All right, so now I'm putting the sight right at the bottom of that black flapper. So it definitely likes a six o'clock hold. Of course, it is an adjustable rear sight. So I can fix that if I like it. Okay. So yeah, right now it's definitely liking that six o'clock hold. So I'm just putting the... Uh, I'm only about 10, 11 yards maybe back from that target, and I'm putting the uh, I'm putting that black steel right on top of my front sight. Let me go for the head where I got a clean spot. I'll go right at the neckline. Yeah. I think I would want to adjust this sight. So it looked like it also did the uh, slam the magazine in and automatically chamber around thing. Let's we'll see if it does that again. Yep. So if you like that feature, there you go. If you don't, well, <laughs> you're stuck with it, I guess. It's got a nice balanced feel. I like that. And of course, we did say it weighs exactly the same as the regular slide. Uh oh. It has a dead trigger and a closed slide. So, and I have rounds. Do I have one chambered? Uh, I can't tell. You know, there is a loaded chamber indicator here. The extractor basically has a little bit of paint on it, but it looks like it might be out a little bit. But, yep, there was a round chambered. I don't know, I'll have to run the film back and see if it shows anything there, but I had a round chambered, uh, but I had a dead trigger, so the striker was not reset for whatever reason. Let's press on.
Okay. Great sight picture. I really like the sight picture. I like the feel of the gun. Nice long sight radius now, of course. Um, I, uh, I think I will want to adjust that sight, though. It's shooting way too 6 o'clock for me. <laughs> it's definitely, uh, definitely printing them higher than I'd like. Okay, and just a fun comparison for those of you who are into fun comparisons. Here are the three slides side by side. And I lined them up right along the very front of the ejection port with a straight edge. So they are evenly lined up and you can see the difference in length, which obviously <laughs> is obvious, right? But I started to do that because I wanted to measure the long slide because I don't have any dimensions for it. So you can see that it's just over eight inches, probably let's call it eight and an eighth ballpark is the overall length of the new long slide but you can see now the difference of each of the three slides All right, while we're comparing everything <laughs> in the kitchen sink, let's take a look at the two barrels. Now, as I suspected, the two recoil spring and guide rod assemblies are identical in length. Identical. It's weird how they painted them opposite ends, but I suspect they are probably the exact same weight spring. Um, there's no reason to believe they're not, especially since the two slides weigh the same. And you can see, obviously, the difference in barrel length on the long slide. Okay, so here's a crude experiment. <laughs> Call me Mr. Mr. Crude Experiment. Uh, so I've got basically an upside down IDPA target that I drew carefully some lines on horizontally at one inch intervals. And I've got that filling the frame so that hopefully what we can do is we can shoot the gun in front of it and we can see the recoil. You know, give us a uh, the idea is that these one inch lines will give us some way to measure. So I'm going to compare the original VP9 slide and barrel to the long slide and see if we can tell, you and I, if there's any difference in recoil that we can perceive. And I promise you I'm going to try to do exactly the same thing as far as my grip and as far as, you know, my stance and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to try to do anything to favor one over the other. In both cases, I'm going to be shooting Sig Sauer Elite Performance Jacket at a hollow point, 124 grain, V-Crown. So, 
all that will be the same. And uh, I don't know. We'll see what this tells us. So here is the. <laughs> sorry for the. Uh, sorry for that board blowing around so much. It is way windier than I expected it to be today. All right. So I'm going to do ten rounds of each. I'm going to do the first five slow, and then I'm going to try and do the second five at a faster pace. I'm going to do that with each gun. Okay, and now the long slide with its 10 rounds of V-Crown. Now one thing I noticed when I first put this slide on the pistol, uh, when I first got it, and just was kind of working it in, is that that O-ring up front definitely is a catch point. You've got to put a lot of oil or grease, and I put a little bit of both on it, and then just run it a lot to, to try and sort of break it in. Um, and I think I may still be dealing with a little bit of that, where today I had that one round uh, that was chambered, but I had a dead trigger. I did not have a reset striker. And I think I probably was not all the way in battery. Then I had a second incident where the gun didn't go all the way into battery. So I think that it could just be hanging up maybe a little bit on that O-ring. Uh, I'm not sure. So I'm going to give it the benefit and just think that there's some break-in required for that. We'll see if I can put a group on paper. I know it's, I know it's shooting high, so I'm going to make sure I keep a nice six o'clock hold on that orange dot. That orange dot is 13 yards down range. I do like this sight picture a whole lot. Yeah, definitely, definitely way high. Probably uh, five inches high. So I've just dropped the front sight blade a little bit down further into the notch. That's brought the group down. Man, it's windy. Look at the wind blowing those bullets around. <laughs> All right. So that was 15 rounds, and that's a not the most impressive group I ever shot at 13 yards, but uh, but not too bad. I got it in a little tighter than I than I thought I might. Certainly lowered it a little bit, but uh, I don't know.
Okay, so wrapping up a first hundred look at the VP9 long slide. I don't think I've ever done a first hundred before on just the slide, but really, if they were to put out a VP9 long slide version of the gun, which they may well do, uh, or they may not, who knows, um, it would be just like this. So it really is looking at the, uh, the VP9 long slide, call it a first hundred. I've got just about 200 rounds of good quality Sig Sauer Elite Performance ammo through this gun today, and... I don't know. I'm having a hard time. At the end of a, at the end of even a first hundred, I generally have formed an opinion about a gun, even though that may change months later or, or years later. But I haven't really formed an opinion yet today on this one. It, uh, I'm having mixed, mixed results and a mixed experience. I, I love the, you know, I love the long slide. I like long slides in general. You say a little bit concerned with the. Uh, the couple of instances where the slide did not want to return all the way home into battery. I mean, if I want that kind of if I want that kind of unreliable behavior, I'll bring my polymer 80 out and shoot it. But uh, I'm going to still assume that that just needs to be broken in, and that most of that has to do with that really really tight fit of that rubber O-ring around the front of the barrel because that does make a difference and it does do that. So. I don't know. Although, again, my uh, my HK45 has that O-ring on it, and it has never ever had that situation. So I don't know. I like it. I like it. I just, you know, I'm not totally in love with it yet. I like the sights. So I don't know, I think there is promise for this VP9 long slide. It is quite fetching. Still has maybe some bugs to work out, but I will find excuses to get this back out, and you'll see it again.